This is not no physical fruit that Adam and Eve ate, sisters and brothers. They ate the fruit of lies. It's talking about the conversation that they was having. You want to know how come I know that? If you could get knowledge from eating an apple or eating a fruit, a physical fruit, then we wouldn't be wasting all this money on education, right? to the voice of the verses today we're gonna to be talking about a very uh special topic we're gonna to be talking about adam and eve today now i know by now you know you heard the story already with the man and the woman being inside of the garden they eating and then they eating the fruit and then god casting them out to the garden because the snake deceived them but today we're gonna to be talking about the untold truth about adam and eve because here's the thing sisters and brothers you always get these white depictions of uh of adam and eve when the scripture says something else then another thing it says that adam and eve ate an apple every time you hear the story of adam and eve you get an apple depicted like you get an apple you get an apple everybody gets an apple every time you see adam and eve you see an apple sisters and brothers when i read the scriptures i don't see any apple in the bible and another thing too, we're going to answer a question that, uh, which is actually a very logical question that a lot of pastors can't answer. And that question is, when God told uh, Adam and Eve, in, in the day that you eat of that tree, that's the day you're going to surely die. But then when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they were still living. Okay guys, let's get into this. We're going to start it off from Genesis chapter 2 and we're going to move down. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now, this is how you learn something on the way to learning something. It says the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, the breath of life. Sorry. Uh, so let's analyze this scripture. Let's have a picture of dust. Now let's have a picture of the depictions of Adam and Eve. I'm not even I'm 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 not even gonna even say anything. Now let's use the same picture of the dust and let's get a more accurate description. You see? You see how that makes sense? Okay, so the question, the topic on Adam and Eve's skin tone has just been answered with the scripture. It's actually very simple. I don't want to spend too long on that. But, but, I just, but I just want to show y'all this is where common sense meets the Bible. Okay? Another thing about this scripture that is very important. He said, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. He didn't say God put a soul inside of the man. It said that man became a living soul. You are the soul. Your body and your soul is the same thing, sisters and brothers. But anyway, I'm going to do that in another video and I'm going to break that down in another video. But man became a living soul. You are a living soul. You don't have a soul inside of you. But anyway, I don't want to spend too long on one thing. Let's continue reading. Verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now people see this script and be like uh, the Bible contradicts itself. Uh, Adam and Eve didn't die. Uh, they still went on to make Cain and Abel. But let's break this down a little bit more. This is why God said, with all I get in, get wisdom and get understanding. Now, people would go on and say, okay, well, they had a spiritual death. So let's go into the script and find the answer. Because that's the only place where you could find the scriptures, the answers in the Bible. So let's go to 2 Peter. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. It's funny. It said, don't be ignorant of this. But yet a lot of people is ignorant of it. Let's read. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So 
one day with God is 1,000 years with man on earth. God, Peter is saying here, hey, don't be ignorant about this. But a lot of people is ignorant of it. But anyway, now using the evidence that we got from the scripture, if 1,000 years on earth is one day for God and God told Adam and Eve, hey, man, uh, you're going to die in that same day. But then Adam and Eve didn't die in that same earthly day. Let's look at God's day. God's day is 1,000 years. Uh, Adam was 930 years, if I'm correct. Adam was 930 years old when he died. Did he die in that day? Yes, he did. He died in the 1,000 years. That's why no man ever lived to see 1,000 years. See how simple that was? Using the scriptures to answer the questions. Using the scriptures to answer the question. You see how simple that is, sisters and brothers? Adam and Eve did die in that day, but he died in God's day, which is 1,000 years. And that even goes to give even more evidence that when God created everything in six days and then he rested on the seventh day, it goes to show that according to earth time, God created the whole universe and everything in 6,000 years, in 6,000 years. And then he rests for 1,000 years because one day is 1,000 years with God. You following? All right, don't let me stay too long on this topic. Let's move on. Genesis chapter 3. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Pay attention to this system, brothers. This is the first lie ever told in the Bible. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Now, sisters and brothers, I'm not going to beat about the bush with you with this, sisters and brothers. This is not no physical fruit that Adam and Eve ate, sisters and brothers. They ate the fruit of lies. It's talking about the conversation that they was having. You want to know how come I know that? If you could get knowledge from eating an apple or eating a fruit, a physical fruit, then we wouldn't be wasting all this money on education, right? All this money that we spend on college. Just go outside and eat a fruit. We wasting money on college for. This is where common sense meets the Bible, sisters and brothers. And I'm going to prove to you that this is a conversation because it says she ate the fruit and then she went and gave it to her husband. She listened to the conversation that the devil was telling her and then she went and told her husband. Anyway, we got to prove it with scripture, you know. You know, you got to believe me. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to Hosea chapter 10. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of lies, sisters and brothers. You know why? Because you watching this video right now, your mind is consuming more than your mouth ever did since 12 o'clock last night. Because your mind is the biggest consumer on your whole body. Your mind consumes more than your mouth. Do you understand? Every conversation you have with somebody, that's why you got to be careful of the people you be around. Because they are feeding you. And your mind is consuming it. Do you understand, right? Okay, let's uh, let's continue. Genesis. And I'm gonna, actually, I want to show you one more proof here. That it was a conversation that they was having. And it was no physical fruit. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Let's go. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Pay attention to this, sisters and brothers. Look at what God is going to say to Adam. Look at this. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? You see that, sisters and brothers? You see that? God asked Adam. He said, hey, man, who told you that you was naked? Why? 
Because the only way they could know that they was naked is if somebody told them. You see the same common sense thing today, sisters and brothers. I don't go and eat a fruit to know one plus one equal two. Somebody had to tell me that one plus one equal two. You understand, sisters and brothers? The simplicity of Christ. You see how simple the Bible is, sisters and brothers? We, 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 we don't get into spookery over here, guys. We just read the book for what it is. You see how simple that is? And I ain't have to fall out and speak in tongues to teach you that? Okay. Now, let's continue. And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned it every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Sisters and brothers, that tree of knowledge and good and evil, that's Satan the devil. It ain't no literal tree. Satan the devil is the tree of knowledge and good and evil. You know why? Satan, you, you, you know how come I know? That Adam and Eve, um, that Satan the devil is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because Jesus is the tree of life. Call let me show you. Let me show you. Look. Psalms 99. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. You see how before we just read that after God cast out Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden. He put cherubims to guard the way of the tree of life. And now we went into Psalms and we see that God sits in between the cherubims. So who is this tree of life that was that the two that the, the cherubims were was put to protect? Who is that tree of life? Jesus, right? Jesus is the tree of life. We're not gonna get into too much. God, of course, God don't need protection, but listen, we're going to offer what the book says. To protect the way of the tree of life. If God feel like putting them there, ain't nobody could stop him. He could put them there. But you see how we use the Bible to gain understanding, sisters and brothers? Jesus is the tree of life. So therefore, who is this tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Satan the devil. And I'm going to go and find a script to prove to you that Satan the devil is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's go to Isaiah 66. This is the last verse. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. This is the coming of the Lord. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. He going to kill a lot of people, guys. People playing around in church. But anyway, let's go. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, say the Lord. Who is this tree that these people is going behind to hide and eat their abomination behind? Satan the devil. You, you, you see what the scripture said? Behind one tree in the garden. Listen, it's not talking about a group of people in the end time running behind a random tree and eating pig. No sisters and brothers. He's talking about Satan. This is why I tell people, God's dietary law is not done away with. And I'm going to do a video on that. They're thinking that you can eat anything you want and just pray over it. But this is the end times. And God is saying that he's going to consume them. Because they're hiding behind the tree in the midst, which is Satan the devil. Because Satan is the one who brings out that doctrine. Saying that you can eat anything you want and just pray over it. Breaking God's commandments. But don't worry. I'm going to do a video on that. But in conclusion, I really hope uh, you guys get what we get now. Let me get the conclusion, man. I didn't write a conclusion, so I'm just going to go off the top of my head. The color of Adam and Eve is as the color of the dirt, that black. Uh, what fruit did Adam and Eve eat? They ate the fruit of lies. Uh, now, oh yeah, another one. When God said, thou shalt surely die, uh, did Adam and Eve die in that day? Yes, they did. They died in that day. Because one day with God is 1,000 years with man. 
So that's why no man ever lived to see 1,000 years. Adam was 930 years when he died. So he was there, but he didn't make it because he said in that day, in that day of the 1,000 years, you going to die. So every man that has ever lived died less than 1,000 years old because 1,000 years is a day for God. You get that? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, guys, com comment inside the comment section if you got it. If there's anything need more explaining, but this is why you here. This is why I always tell you guys, bring your pen, your paper, and patience because you're going to learn a lot on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I got something else that I got to say before I go. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to try and start uploading every Sabbath now. So every Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that's the Sabbath. So I'm going to try to upload every Sabbath. God's willing. If, if, if you don't see me upload, well, then you got to wait until the other Sabbath. So I'm trying to make it more consistent. So I have a schedule. I'm going to be uploading every Sabbath. God's willing. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I appreciate you. God bless. Hey guys, if you like that video and you want to share this biblical, but shockingly unorthodox truth, like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that you turn on that bell while you're at it and share the video, get the conversation going. It is very much appreciated.